surgical guide for minimally invasive pelvic floor ligament fixation using the N-Place device. Begin by inserting a gloved finger into the vagina to palpate and identify the landmarks along the sacrospinous ligament, sweeping from the ischial spine to the sacrum to have an image of the ligament in your mind. Next, use the finger guide and repeat the palpation of the landmarks and focus in the target area, middle third and lower half of the SSL. This is usually approximately one finger breadth off the sacrum. Note, the surgeon will go from his or her left to the patient's left ligament side and from his or her right to the patient's right side. The working channel of the finger guide will always be on the lateral side of the finger. Once you are familiar with the patient's anatomy, introduce the anchor inserter through the finger guide's working channel. Continue to apply pressure to flatten the vaginal mucosa, having swept the rectum away medially. The inserter should be introduced at an angle similar to the axis of the vagina. A rough guide is to maintain pressure at an approximate angle of about 45 degrees to the SSL and then perform a clean deployment of the anchor into the posterior aspect of the SSL. Some surgeons depress the trigger two to three times to propel the anchor forward through the ligament. Repeat the same procedure on the contralateral side using the remaining finger guide. Some surgeons may opt to utilize in place in a unilateral approach, which is also common. At this time, perform a rectal exam to confirm proper anchor placement. Perform a small transverse incision of 1.5 to 2 centimeters on the upper anterior portion of the cervix, as shown. Gently use your finger to palpate, locate, and bluntly dissect the cervical stroma. If the patient has no cervix, the incision will be made approximately at the vaginal cuff site. A retractor, such as a Deaver or Bryski, will be used to widen the vaginal wall and identify the suture from the original anchor placement. Using a one or two inch free mayo needle, thread a suture tail through the needle to ultimately pass behind the vaginal wall and through the cervical stroma. The surgeon will use the original puncture or piercing from initial placement of the anchor. That small target is the access point. Using a needle driver, one may guide the free needle through that puncture and behind the vaginal wall, exiting the cervix incision. This step safely and completely removes the suture from the vagina. Point the needle tip toward the suture's exit point in the stroma. It may help to have an assistant use an allus to manipulate the anatomy and help the free needle exit the stroma. Then insert it into the cervical tissue and guide it to emerge through the incision. A retractor such as a Deaver or a Bryski will be used to widen the vaginal wall and identify the suture from the original anchor placement. This step is repeated for each suture tail. It is important to have the four suture tails exit in a high-low placement on each side of the stroma area. See diagram slide. Some surgeons opt to bring two sutures through the stroma with a single pass. If this approach is utilized, it is important to make a significant purchase of cervical tissue, lateral to medial, with at least one of the tails on each side to create a stronger fixation in the stroma. Repeat this action for each of the suture tails as needed. Use a zero to two vicral suture. One may use a purse string or two individual sutures as the approach to pre-place closing sutures as the incision will be further away after suture tensioning. Push the cervix together with uterus and vaginal vault inward with an alice or similar instrument and slide it along the sutures, maintaining tension on the sutures by holding them with an alice clamp in your opposite hand. This step ensures there is no hidden slack in any of the sutures. Ensure that the cervix is positioned at approximately 5 to 6 centimeters at the C point for optimal repair or correction. With great care, tie at least eight knots to secure the cervix in its new position and ensure the knot bundle is pushed deep into the cervical tissue. Close using the pre-placed vicral suture to close the cervical incision.